and I am thankful. This meeting is being recorded. And now we're being recorded. So thank you, Bob. Yeah, it took me a while. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would first like to uh, thank outgoing treasurer Dennis Donovan for his years of uh, managing the financial reporting for the vestry and the parish. Uh, well done, sir. Thank you very much and, and enjoy uh, your time away. Uh, 2021 uh, was another year of challenges for the church, many of which led to nimble adjustments to the income and expense streams of St. James. Um, Bob, do you have uh, the uh, the first slide of the pie charts? There you go. See it? Uh, I'm just seeing the big thing. It says Treasurer's 2021 year-end report. No. There we go. Uh, next one, if you got it, we'll come back to that one. All right, the income. Yeah, uh, yeah, the income and expense one, please. All right, there's the income. That's 2021. All right, we'll start here. Adjusting uh, to uh, the new and ever-changing worship schedules uh, led to some disruptions in our expected patterns of giving throughout the early part of the year. At the same time, larger than expected capital repairs for the roof and a major sewer line issue on the church grounds drain the remaining funds set aside for such events during the first two thirds of the year. The vestry and the church leadership were kept abreast of these and other expense challenges monthly and made cost cutting adjustments as they were able to control outflows of funds. Nevertheless, the situation looked dire in late summer, which prompted several written communications and discussions from the pulpit regarding our collective financial position. Bob, do you have the expense uh, pie chart there, which hopefully is the next one? Numerous parishioners responded with catch-up payments to pledges, open plate gifts, and designated gifts to specific programs to the church, including capital repairs and endowment gifts, amongst others. I want to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who responded to this call to help alleviate the financial challenges from earlier in 2021. This late year res response helped turn the tide for the operations of the church. The day-to-day -day operational position of the church ended the 2021 fiscal year with a net gain of $118,820. However, those aforementioned capital repairs cost $183,403 during this period, leading to a loss of $64,583. The timing of those expenses caused the church to deplete funds previously set aside, and year-end revenues are only now beginning to replenish those coffers. Bob, now we can go back to that uh, balance sheet, uh, the cash and investments pie chart. There you go. All is not bleak, however. Through careful management, the church endowment funds have grown to over $1.5 million as of December 31st. The market has been very good to us, but our endowment committee maintains a careful eye on future positions. While earnings increases are needed, core deposits to the endowment help this series of funds grow year over year and give the future church more options for capital expenditures, debt repayment, and program expansion. If you have been considering ways to contribute to the church's endowment program, please reach out to a member of the endowment committee. Several of them are actually on this uh, Zoom call I've seen, or you can contact parish accountant Aaron Edwards for more information. In addition to the endowment funds, the church has remaining collected funds of $151,127 to be applied to loan payments in our connected building. These funds accumulated from the campaign in 2018 through 2020 and are committed to paying down the debt for the building expansion uh, opened in 2019. These funds are expected to pay monthly loan payments for approximately another 19 months, after which time replacement funding from other sources will be needed. The vestry has regular discussions on this upcoming event and is including this in future budgeting. The church has also been blessed with several large gifts in the end of 2021 that are designated for certain efforts. These have been accumulated into a strategic reserves fund until such time as these can be broken out into the programs where needed. Music, 
capital improvements, and other programs will benefit from these seed funds, but ongoing funding will need to be maintained to continue these programs after their initial setup. This is one of the reasons why regular pledges and open plate gifts are so important to the planning and sustainability of parish programs. The Vestry and Executive Committee of the Church are prayerfully considering how best to utilize these gifts in 2022. Bob, you have the budget slide for 2022? Yeah, here's your income. Uh, that's 2021. Do you have the um, the one for the 2022 budget that the vestry approved? Yeah, I think it's slow painting on your machine. Can other folks see it? Yeah. There we go. Gotcha. I see it. The vestry has reviewed or approved a budget for 2022 that shows a 16% increase in pledges committed over 2021, as well as a 5% increase in the income from the school. With these new expected revenues, some new and returning programs should be on their way. The expenses include a salary for a music director position approximately mid-year, as well as a new expense category for capital improvements and repairs funded directly out of the operational budget. This year, we're starting with $30,000. Thank you to those that have responded with pledge cards, and please continue to prayerfully remember St. James as future giving opportunities arise. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to serve as your treasurer once more. I'm happy to discuss the items listed here or any other financial questions about the church. Bob, do we have a slide with my contact information on it by some odd chance? No, but I can't. I didn't think we had one. I wasn't sure. Um, this, uh, these prepared remarks uh, will actually go out um, in the bulletin next week as well as in the um, weekly uh, e-blast. Um, so I have my contact information, my email address, my cell number. You can always stop and chat with me after the eight o'clock uh, service on most Sundays. I am always happy to talk about the church financials. So with that, those are my prepared remarks, Mr. Senior Warden. Colin, one thing, do you, did you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, show the expense pie chart or you, hey, I'm showing. That's fine, yes, we can do, yeah, you can, you can certainly do that. Yeah, those are the, um, this includes the uh, budget expenses there. That music director position I mentioned is in that large blue area. Um, and then the green pie chart slice now shows the $30,000 in capital expenses and improvements, which we've begun including in this year's budget. Yeah. So. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. You're welcome. Okay. I think, Joe, you are going to speak, I believe, correct? Yes. So I'm Joe Irvin. Um, good to see everybody on here today. Um, so uh, Barry Hamilton and Bob Masita and I make up the endowment committee. And, um, you know, the, the endowment fund had a, a phenomenal year in 2021. Um, uh, Bob, if you can go to the to the next slide with the with the numbers. Um, as you can see, we we started the year. Um, it's at one million three hundred fifty-eight thousand three seventeen, um, and we ended the year at one million five hundred thirty-five thousand seven forty-five, hmm. um, and that is with a uh, hundred and ten thousand of withdrawals. Um, that withdrawal number is a little bigger for last year because we decided. Um, to defer 2020's withdrawal at, to 2021. And so we had a net gain of 177,428, again, net of, you know, 110,000 worth of withdrawal. So we had great growth, um, you know, in the endowment fund and, um, you know, the, the market um, had, a, had a good year. So we benefited from that. So, you know, we'd love to see, you know, more gifts and, and do donations to this, but, um, but it, it was really good to see, um, you, know, really, you know, good growth, um, you know, from, from the fund this year. And Bob or Barry, did you all have anything to, um, to add? No. Okay, thank you, Joe and Bob and Barry. Uh, as you can see, this this has really helped us, and you'll see in a couple of my comments later on. Uh, 
how important the endowment is. So that's another way to give if you need to, uh, rather than just a pledge, you can always give to the endowment. Okay, Joe, your better half is on. Better half, that's great. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Stacy Irvin. Um, and uh, I just want to give you a quick update. I'm, I'm hopefully everybody had a chance to read our annual report that we did give to the church. But um, I just wanted to talk briefly about the fact that it's hard to believe, but we're 40 years old. Um, so 40 years wow. ago, Reverend Prentin Kinzer approached some parishioners about opening a preschool at St. James. And parishioner Ann since recently recalled that there were four classes originally in 1982. And at that time, parishioners were bringing in their children's extra toy toys indoor sliding boards, climbing toys, furniture, anything they could sneak away from their own children. And so we fast forward four decades and today you would find 184 students filling eight preschool classes, two kindergarten classes and a first through fifth grade. So we have 43 faculty and staff, a beautiful new wing, outdoor space to run and play and access to Chapultepec. And so the school really finds itself in a strong position in enrollment, in service to our community and in our financial outlook. We continue to faithfully tithe to the church in addition to appropriate cost sharing and remain fiscally responsible with a budget that is carefully constructed each year and adhered to. We also continue to try and keep our tuition reasonably priced uh, while operating optimally. Our mission season is now open for 22-23, it's hard to believe. Um, and we just ask our church family to continue to spread the good word about our school so that others um, might be interested can, can come here as well. So to commemorate our 40th year, we plan several events this year to celebrate and we'll connect with our entire St. James community. And there are many ways that we hope you'll be able to participate. Please continue to watch our social media channels, um, our 40th anniversary webpage and print invitations throughout the year on how you can celebrate with us. Um, I'll also put a link in the chat where you can share your personal story and connection with St. James on our special anniversary webpage um, and read others, others' stories too. And one of the things that Anne did write in her story was, she says, quote, it is very gratifying to see the level of excellence that St. James Episcopal School has achieved over these 40 years. The school has grown from very humble beginnings to a place of pride within our church and community. So we continue to ask for your prayers and support as we celebrate our 40th year. And I'm um, just, we're so extremely grateful for this church school relationship and thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, Stacy, <laughs> thank you. All right, well, a few thoughts from me. Uh, just uh, connecting a little bit with um, what Stacy and, and Colin said, uh, this is basically our mortgage. Uh, we in the connected campaign for for a couple of folks that probably are new to the churches was the campaign that we did to raise money uh, to pay for the construction. And one of the components was a, a mortgage. As you can see, we took we reduced it a little bit um, a year over year. Uh, also, uh, Oakview Bank slightly modified the, the P&I payments. Uh, I think it was about 72.40 before now, it's 71.20. Uh, and they adjusted that past the past year. Uh, now, how do we pay for this? As, as Colin had indicated, we've got enough money left in the connected to get us to 2023. Um, going forward after that, part of the component is the draw from the endowment of about 55. Uh, the school gives us 10,000 annually, and this year they gave us an additional 33,000 uh, uh, to cover the payments. And then if you look at the 55 and 10, and our payments are about 85, that's 20 that has to be made up from the operations uh, cost. So just keep that in mind. Um, and then there's a refinance, we're an adjustable mortgage, and so the refinance comes in 2024. All right, and um, just talking about uh, some of the things that we've done for the vestry election, from what I can gather, this is the first one we've had in 20 years. Um, so it's a rare, it's rare uh, occurrence. And 
we were having it in a virtual environment. If we were all in the church, in the parish hall, we'd hand out paper ballots and you'd mark them and you'd put them in a box on the way out and we'd figure out who was who. Uh, we don't have that luxury. So we had to get a little creative. So we've done a, a hybrid. It is a virtual um, effort and also a paper effort if the virtual, you, you don't want to do it that way or you can't. Uh, and there are some parish members that, that want to prefer paper. Uh, and I think we've explained what we're doing before. Uh, we did look at all sorts of acti alternatives, Zoom, polling, uh, Google forms and stuff, and none would meet what we needed to have done. So we're using an application that was is costing us money, but it's a very, very modest amount called Election Buddies. And you will get a uh, an email from, it'll say from the church, and again, you'll, you'll fill out that out and, and put it in. And we, the, I'm the admin and I cannot see uh, who voted what. I can see who voted, but the, the results of what you vote are totally masked. So there's, so it is, it, it's a pretty good system. So please vote. Um, and you, again, you got till the end of Friday or the middle day of Friday. Uh, and that gives us Friday afternoon to, to count and administer. And during COVID, and I, I, those of you who saw Ben's sermon at eight o'clock or at the 1015, um, and I know we, we had a problem at the 1015 streaming. Um, so we'll, I just was talking to Ben during this call. We'll figure out a way where he can do his sermon again because it was really good. Um, but our first goal during COVID was keep the parish connected. You know, we just didn't want to go dark and, and not hear anything. And we did that by videos. And a lot of you on the call contributed to those videos, and it was very it was wonderful to see those and piece them together, and we got to see a lot of the parish community, and found out that a lot of them are very skilled at making videos, so that was good. And there are cases where we could stream, we did. We had a All Saints Sunday where we were going to do it in a parking lot. It rained, and a, we called an audible, and five minutes later we were on the air. Uh, with Benet and Chris and, 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 and Ben and I. So we, we could do that. It, we also wanted to return safely. And we used uh, Chapultepec and Scott uh, Christian's farm. We had uh, services out there. We moved to the parking lot. And when the diocese would allow us back in the church, we figured out our mass uh, and size limits. And we adopted commun communion procedures, which we are still using today. Uh, and part of the reason why we're using the procedures, it wouldn't make sense right now to get everybody up at the rail because we would we would defeat the whole purpose of being sort of at, at, at appropriate distances. And the procedures just allowed everybody to get in, get uh, receive communion and, and not interfere with people going out. So, and also I think we thought out of the box a little bit. We had summer on the playground Friday nights and I think that was really well. And Ben was too modest on a Christmas pageant. We had standing only, you know, standing room only on that pageant in the afternoon. Uh, and that, that was wonderful. I mean, we had a band, we had donkeys, we had refreshments, we had everything, you know, you, it, it was great. And I hope we, I've recommended that we continue. Uh, as we alluded to, the music director, uh, Nicole uh, Benet is in charge, is leading the search committee. Uh, we've got other members on it. And the goal is to have a new director in place by July. Now that could, you know, it, it could slip one way or the other. Depends on where the candidate is, where they are, and, and, and their ability to get here and stuff. But we think July, would we get them by July, they're up to speed and the choir is connected again by the program year that starts. Our goal again too is to restart the cafe on September 22. Um, and I think we'll make it. We were originally starting planning on this past September and during the summer it looked like we might pull it off but uh, we had Delta and now we have Omicron but I think we'll, we'll be there. And we are probably looking at some modifications on how we serve food. 
to see if there's a little more healthy way or to, to serve it with rather having people just leaning over the food and then picking it up. So that's to be determined. Some other thoughts, I think financially, and you saw from, from Colin's presentation that one of the goals we were trying to do is spend wisely. Now, wisely doesn't mean be cheap. It just means be intentional on what we're spending our money on. Uh, so that we, I mean, the people that, that pledge or giving and play give us money and they give it with a certain element of trust that we will do good things with their money and, and for, the, for the betterment of the, the parish community. If you also notice, we're preparing a little bit for the future. The strategic reserve is going to be important because there's, we don't know what we don't know in a lot of areas. And the way to handle that is to be prepared for it. Uh, and uh, we're also going to try to identify future items that may cost money. They may not happen tomorrow. They may not happen next week, but we know they're out there and let's see if we can identify. And again, just to plan. And we have started rebuilding our pledge to amount, blade amounts. Uh, and we've had a good pledge campaign and hopefully we'll continue that. And the reason why we need to continue that and to increase it is the, the last goal in that subheading there is uh, Ben's been able to do this a little bit now because we've had a slowdown of, of, of programs because of the COVID. But if we want to get to where we want, uh, I know Ben's Superman, but he, he needs help as well. So uh, to establish a goal where we can get an assistant, a full-time assistant rector. Now that, if it's full-time, that means that individual gets paid, gets fringe, and a lot of things. So it's, it's, uh, it's not cheap, but it's, it's not inexpensive either. So hopefully that's a goal we can work on. And of course, I still have my property job. So just a couple of comments on that. And I didn't realize this. Our physical plant, and you can see the four main sections, um, expand over a century. And if I counted the basement of the nave, uh, we would be into the 19th century. Um, so it requires a lot of care and feeding. Uh, and I know at one time we mentioned we had 34 different air conditioning units, which is about right. Uh, but there's really five different HVAC systems that are all different and operate different. And some have been more reliable than others. And the philosophy that, that I've pushed and we've adopted is let's keep stuff repaired and replace when necessary, but let's don't do shortcuts, um, which leads me into the sewage project, which started out as a one week project and lasted a month and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and believe it or not, it, it started with uh, the rectory not being able to, they had the, the basement flooding and uh, toilets would not work. And what we found, uh, and Leo, I'll back up a second. The individual that we had contracted to do work for us got to the point, and she, she was very good, and she was very noted. She was the go-to girl in Fauquier County for this stuff. Guy came, up, came to us and said, I've done what I can do. We, you need more help, you know? And so we did contract with a company out of Richmond that was well uh, respected and did a very good job. And they've done work in the Smithsonian Institute and Arlington National Cemetery. So we were getting people that knew what they were doing. And it was kind of an interesting project because what we found, we found things we didn't know were there. Uh, we found things that we didn't know what they were there for. And we also found out the, that it starts at Ben's house, runs under the courtyard, runs into the church, drains everything from the church, runs out through the church parking lot and then connects to the new building. So everything but the new building runs through this pipe. Uh, everything but the new building runs. And so what we've done, and we found sections of pipe that probably were in the early 1900s. Uh, so everything is complete now. It is solid PVC pipe that will last far beyond Ben's and my grandchildren. Okay, so it's, it's, we're done with that project. With the roof, um, we found a good contractor to work on and he identifies, he goes up, we see issues, he takes photographs, gives us options. And we've had a we've had about three areas that we've worked on. One is over the organ, which of course is, doesn't leak now. 
Uh, one was over the archive room. And even though it's a slate roof, slate, slate doesn't really go bad. It may break, but it's all the underlayment and, and flashing and metal that, that does. And then we found one in the, the beginning of the uh, cloisters, which goes into the parish hall door was totally bad. And we actually had some beams that were rotten and, and they, they were expensive. That's when you saw all the scaffolding that may have been up in the front. So our goal when we do this is we try to identify and continue to use exceptional contractors. We want guys that know what they're doing, uh, do it well and do it right. And at a, at a, mod at a modest cost or as at a reasonable cost, I'll say. And I think we've got a good team of those that, that do that for us. And, uh, I think you'll see that as we continue going in that philosophy that the church will will become a physical plant that is stable and, and is in being able to be used and enjoyed by all. So I think that is all for me. Um, I'm going to break now for because we're doing really well on time. Are there any questions that have, on any of the subjects we've discussed so far before we continue? And I'm, since I'm sharing, I can't see. So if, if someone either raises their hand or chats. Okay, I'm seeing none, so I'm going to continue. All right, this, again, has been alluded to, four of the vestry members are uh, are leaving. Um, Walter, Ross, Sue, and, uh, and myself, and I, I I will thank Walter, Ross, and Sue for their service. They've been very helpful. Uh, I'm not going to thank myself, um, but I do want to thank the vestries that I have served with and the parishioners of this church for their support during my time on the vestry. I have considered it a privilege and an honor to be your senior warden for the last two years, and I'm definitely better for the experience. When I accepted the role two years ago. Little did we know we would be go what we'd be going through mm -hmm. in the next two years. Uh, but I believe we were successful in St. James's position to do great things. And, you know, one of the blessings that I found on doing this is to work closely with the rector. And I can tell you it has been one of the best experiences I've had in my life. And I know I don't have to tell you guys, but we have a rock star for a, for a rector. You know, I think that goes without saying. And Ben, we are very, very lucky to have you. And uh, you are, we are lucky and blessed and appreciated. So again, thanks for all the support. And I know the next wardens that we have will be just as good and great. And I think the church is going to be in good hands. So I think that is it. And Ben. Well, thank um, you. I did. I won't lay you off the hook that easily, Bob. Uh, <laughs> I do think that it, I mean, it is one of the more palpable senses of the Holy Spirit that Bob was at the helm during the last two years, because I don't know if there is a uh, another parishioner in any parish uh, that could dedicate and have the capabilities that, that Bob did at the moment when it, he was called upon. And uh, what, a, um, what an example of discipleship and using uh, profound gifts uh, to, to God's purposes. And so I I not only consider him a, a dear friend and uh, and wonderful wonderful partner in ministry, but just in, in beyond indebted. And I invite you to um, unmute and uh, and give him a round of applause. And and when you see him in person, uh, certainly thank Big him that way as well. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. I am blessed to be in this Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I think, uh, Ben, why don't you pray us out and then we'll adjourn. Absolutely. Well, again, let us pray. Most loving God, thank you for the spirit that moves around this place. Thank you for the fact that in the last 12 months, we've been able to regather in, in that special place. And thank you for the realization that that we are so much more than place and for allowing us to be able to meet this way. Uh, give us guidance in all that we do and be with all those who offered up their, their names to be considered for vestry. We thank you for all the ways that they will serve, whether on vestry or not, and for all of those uh, willing to roll up their sleeves and, and be your hands and feet in the world. Continue to guide us so that we can minister in new places. 
and help us to always see ahead the waters that you're leading us to, um, to fish. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. We adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. All right. No. Without objection. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you, and may Thank you all you have a great week. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Have a great week. Thank you for being St. James. Thank you.